Hello, my presentation is called Challenging Voices, Music Making with Children Excluded from School Because of Their Behaviour. The presentation is built on my PhD research, which I did in England. This research combined an action research methodology with grounded theory, and it was based in alternative provi provision, known as AP. These are the locations where young people are sent after being excluded from school. I reviewed the literature. I observed music work in alternative provision settings, uh, settings known as pupil referral units or PRUs or PRUs, which is what I'll call them. I interviewed PRU staff and I also interviewed music leaders working in alternative provision. Since my PhD, I have, I have interviewed an additional 35 music leaders as well as project managers. Most of those I interviewed were from the non-formal or community music sector, and they call themselves music leaders, which is the term I will use throughout this presentation. Now, it became clear uh, during the research that there were a number of what I call elements at play in music work with children excluded from mainstream school. So these were things that were, were recognizable in every context and where the music leader, if they got on top of them, if they optimized them, they could create a really good uh, music session. In no particular order, those elements were, first, uh, firstly, what, what the children bring, what the children bring in terms of their dispositions, their interests, their abilities, and so forth and working with those, working with what the children bring. The reflective practice and, and being a reflective practitioner was another element. Also very important were the intentions of the leader, what the leader was trying to do in the session. A fourth one was the material and ideas used, and particularly in this, what was important was where those ideas came from, who generated them. Very often they were generated by the young person working closely in cooperation with the music leader. So there was a lot of co-creation going on. Fifthly, we had this uh, thing around focus and energy and trying to get the, the focus of the group in balance with the energy of the group. So they didn't get too energetic and it, it, and it spill over into chaos. So trying to keep the group focused even as their energy rose, very, very important. And then finally, the organizing structures, how the, how the space was laid out and all the different things that the leader did to set the environment. These were, these were the uh, six different elements that were at play in these sessions. I'm going to look at context for a while and, and I, I want to kind of bring to your attention the fact that these children are really amongst society's most vulnerable children. And I think a quote from Arnold from 2009 really, re really captures this. He says, the way in which society deals with difference, particularly differences that manifest themselves as difficult or challenging behavior, can be seen as a reflection of the view that society holds about its most vulnerable members. However, there are gaps between rhetoric and reality. The present educational climate in the UK, which emphasizes inclusion of all pupils, nevertheless continues to operate a state sanctioned system that allows for pupils to be excluded from school. So a number of us see uh, working with children as challenging behavior as kind of the frontier of, of inclusion, the frontier of inclusive practice uh, many educators want to be inclusive, but find that the challenge in behavior is the, is the hard area. And, uh, and, uh, and this is uh, why this is such an important group to look at. Going on with context, I want to look a little bit at who gets excluded. And I've said these kids are amongst the most vulnerable. It's no surprise then that we see that across a number of different categories. Uh, Taylor in 2012 and Visser, Visser in 2003 both identified that children with challenges at home uh, would be amongst the most excluded. Taylor talks a lot about chaotic households. 
boys outnumber girls at least three to one and in some in in some years more four five to one in terms of who gets permanently excluded children in poverty in england get excluded more frequently we have a system in england uh, where 15 percent around 15 percent of children get get what's called free school meals they get they get a hot lunch uh, which they don't have to pay for so 15 percent of kids get that but actually the children who are excluded are sometimes above 40 percent on free school meals so they're much more represented uh, than other kids and also children from certain ethnic backgrounds uh, as identified by Gill. Um, children from an afro-caribbean background or from a roma gypsy background are two and a half to four times more likely to be permanently excluded and children from an irish traveler background these are nomadic people who, who, who are from an irish ethnic background uh, children from an irish traveler background will be excluded 17 times more frequently than uh, white uk kids so there's a real imbalance in terms of ethnic backgrounds and then finally we come on to who else is excluded children with special educational needs and and also those with disabilities and particularly within group, this group uh, children with mental health difficulties so as i said here those who get excluded are really amongst the most vulnerable children in the country what happens to these kids who get excluded well first of all uh, they don't do well academically uh, in school we have in England a system called the GCSE exam which children do at the age of 15 or 16 and uh, the idea is to get five or more GCSE subjects at either grade A grade B or grade C so five A to C's at GCSE that's kind of the national standard and somewhere between 55 and 60 percent of kids uh, attain that every year but if the children are excluded from mainstream and in alternative education provision only 1 to 1.5 percent of those kids achieve that national standard these children um, according to German in 2003 have a, have a substantially increased risk of homelessness in fact that report said that they were 90 times more likely to, to become homeless than children who stayed on uh, in mainstream school and sat their exams there are also many reports say that they are highly vulnerable to involvement in crime and in fact the ministry of justice report in 2012 said that over 40 percent of young offenders in prisons uh, had been permanently excluded from school so significant negative life outcomes for many of these young people uh, i want to look now at the, at the environment the environment setting and uh, probably a good quote here to start this off is from a music leader who, who gives us an idea about prues and says i think there is something about a prue which is quite an in-between state you're not quite in schools you're not quite in prison Prues have a real sense of uncertainty so that can be very destabilizing for a young person so we see from the other two quotes that the uh, uh, music leaders really try and counteract this one said it's about having an ability to create a neutral space a space that feels safe and isn't associated with other elements of school where there may be conflict a space where they don't feel judged a non-judgmental space and uh, a project manager who was working with uh, children uh, the, these these children but in an outside school project uh, said once in the space there is food available they are welcomed personally into the space as they come in there's an intro what's your name do you want a brew which is an English phrase for do you want a cup of tea we find that we find that link to building a personal relationship it's definitely about relationship building making it as unscary as possible to walk in that door so a number of ways that i observed uh, that that the music leaders structured the music environment included 
ensuring a democratic layout of the space. So that was often chairs in a circle or a semicircle. Um, and the, um, a democratic, particularly in terms of seating, as I've said, but also in terms of democratic access to resources, being very careful about who got access to which resources when. The music leaders articulated a non-coercive approach. They didn't force the young people to make music. They never forced the young people to make music. And they allowed people to exit and re-enter the group without sanction. So quite different from many mainstream school norms in that respect. They created what, what, what they called a positive timeout space. So this was somewhere in the room that, that wasn't a sanction. The kids could go there and they could just chill out if they needed to get away from the stress of being involved in the, in the music making group. Um, the music leaders made efforts to balance contributions equally uh, from each participant and they welcomed all contributions and they gave a lot of positive feedback. Now I'm going to move into pedagogy but I want to make one clear statement here that for these young people the child is their own curriculum so the, the music really comes from the child's interests, uh, from, from the child's feelings from what happens to the child, you know, during the week, etc., etc. The child, there's not an external curriculum for most. It's the child is is really their own curriculum. So that really is about the idea of what we call co-creativity, shared ownership, working with what the children bring, and some quotes really illustrate this. A project manager said, "The project is the young people." The whole project is based on what the young people want. It's based on what they need. So without the young people, there is no project. Another music leader acknowledged that it's not all easy and said they bring their difficult behavior and all the hurt and neglect that leads to it. But still another kind of went beyond that and said, my overwhelming experience of every young person that walks into the room is that what they bring first is a massive barrier and if you allow it to fall away and don't butt up against it then every child has a creativity and a spark inside them that is a wonder to see. One great story about how immersed they've involved uh, these kids get in uh, creating music and in writing lyrics etc is this one from a project manager who said a young person missed his session because he had to spend the night in the cell so the police had, had picked up and arrested this kid in our session next week he was full of energy because he spent the time in the cell writing lyrics which he then recorded his direct quote was I'm sorry I wasn't there last week but it is all right because I wrote a rap when I was in my cell. Many of the music leaders and uh, also the project managers uh, spoke about their role with the young people and how their roles were different than they would be in mainstream. And they spoke about how they spent a lot of time uh, building relationships, uh, professional relationships with the young people. So just quoting from a project manager, they said, there is no teacher student relationship. Sessions are very much about what the young people want. The young people are in control. We have no prior agenda. We have no syllabus. And a lot of them said that they didn't work from a curriculum or from a syllabus. They work from what the young people uh, created. Another said the relationship is one of trust. We're all musicians in different places in our musical life. I don't feel the separation of teacher pupil that I may have done many years ago. And still another said, I describe it as more like a producer artist relationship. They meant a uh, uh, record producer. So I describe it as more like a producer artist relationship. In some sessions, the young people take total control. When it is working really well, it is producer, producer. They are no longer a naughty child from a prue. They walk into this building and they are a musician. 
So this idea that they could actually reframe their own sense of identity, they could go from being somebody who was always identified in the negative to somebody who was proud of themselves, was a musician. This was very important uh, all across the work. Co-creation, this idea of creating together is massively important, but it's not the only approach used. Uh, sometimes people work on pre-written material. But talking about co-creation, one, one uh, director of a community music project said creativity is the core of every project. That's how the children like it. They want to express themselves. The music leaders have to work hard to make that happen. Another speaking about technology said, I use iPads a lot because you can get a sound that is in tune, good timbre in time by just moving your finger a few centimeters. The learning isn't about a physical or mental task. It's about a series of creative choices. And this idea that if you take away that challenge of uh, struggling with an instrument for, for kids who have a very low threshold for learning, who, who don't see themselves as learners, and you just give them, you just immerse them in the creative process, uh, that they can really get engaged with this and sustain engagement. And then over time, they can work on more technical aspects. That was very strong. Uh, a hip hop music leader said, in rap lyric writing, people tend to open up really quickly in all the different settings uh, that, that they worked in, uh, from young people in care, to prisons, to prose. Stuff around lyric writing enables you to get straight to conversations about the real issues in people's lives. So this music leader, like many of them, was not only working on developing the musicianship and the creative musicianship of the young person, but was also working on their personal growth and their social development as well. Very strong part of the work. Now, they also spoke about the, what we'll call the responsive qualities of the leader, the leader being in the moment and being able to respond to the moment. And I think it's very well summed up by the following quote from a music leader who said, in no order you need musical skill, which doesn't have to be playing an instrument, an ability to be flexible and responsive while also keeping an overall vision in mind, a sense of humor, impeccable communication skills, and also the ability to balance the needs in a group, to emotionally hold everyone in a group. So quite a thorough and complex set of skills that are needed there. They were all, to one extent or another, reflective practitioners, and there was quite a lot of discussion as well about their what we'll call positionality, you know, how they saw themselves, how they thought the children saw them. And a lot of the reflection stuff was about reflection during action, reflecting in the moment and making decisions in the moment. And it's summed up very well in the following quite long quote. Going with the child and keeping your eye on the whole group. So your eye is always on the big picture. And even though this child never takes part, I haven't taken my eye off him for one second. And the minute he flickers, I enable whatever he is offering to become part of what we've got. Even if that's, even if he's just itching to take control or anything. But at the same time, I'm thinking, is that a wise decision for the group then? Or am I just feeling sorry for that poor child who's not been involved in the session? So I think on two levels all the time. One is about quick reflex. And I also always think about the bigger picture, the longer picture. Uh, and I, I talked about positionality. And uh, it was very interesting. We talk about personal and social growth, the personal and social development. And, and a number of music leaders talked quite a bit about that. One talked about gender and how they thought about uh, the children's relationship to gender. Here's the quote. I think as a male going in, it is really important that you are consistent, that you are clear, that you are honest, but also 
that you don't mind showing that you don't have to be completely macho to show that you're a man and that there are different ways of being manly and that could be being silly getting on the floor playing role games or something and that doesn't make you you're not less of a man in their eyes so they're seeing something some possibilities for different routes to masculinity now with a lot of these kids as i say they end up in uh, criminality and particularly in urban gangs etc so for them to see different ways of being a man is a really interesting thing that this uh, music leader is bringing to the session now these children are excluded from school because of their challenging behavior and when i spoke to the non-musical pro staff for most of them that was really a big priority as one said Yes, their academia is important, but it's the behavior first and foremost. And many of the staff spent considerable time trying to uh, change the children's behavior and go through discipline type routines. This was not the same uh, for the music leaders at all. But there's a quote from Taylor that's kind of interesting and puts this in context. And here's the quote, children from chaotic backgrounds placed in chaotic schools inevitably become more chaotic in their behavior where the school mirrors their home lives by being disorganized unpredictable and unsafe they feel emotionally uncontained and revert to the behavior that they use that they use to survive at home the music uh, the music leaders saw it quite differently as one said, I think kids in Prus have had bad experiences of authority. And if you try to impose your will, you're not going to get very far. So instead, you've got to meet young people where they are at and show them that it is worth learning. Another said, we don't exclude anyone here. We put it down to a bad day. If behavior is challenging, that can be important for them. Many have come from places of trauma or challenge. Now, not everybody saw it in the same way. I would say the music leaders were on a spectrum around behavior, but they all uh, were less focused on behavior change than the uh, non-music specialists. Um, and in fact, one kind of summed it up by saying, essentially the music making uh, and the environment and the group work, etc. Essentially the music making creates its own discipline. So in terms of outcomes for these kids, we've looked at that earlier earlier on, what, what happens to a lot of them uh, in life and, 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 uh, and how that can be very negative. Uh, there was an interesting report from the English Parliament from the House of Commons in 2018. Um, and the quote from that says that fundamentally, outcomes for children in alternative, alternative pr provision are not good enough and their successes and their achievements often go unrecognized. Their outcomes are currently judged against mainstream performance measures and do not take into consideration the circumstances that have led pupils to be educated in alternative provision and the challenges that both pupils and teachers face. So for many of the music leaders, they were working on the idea of what we'll call a distance traveled uh, mode of assessment you know from where the kids started to where the kids uh, moved forward to was much more interesting than any outside preset assessment their quotes uh, one said sometimes music is the only way they can be top of the class and when they discover this it can have a knock-on effect on their identity their identity in school it might be the first time a teacher has seen them as talented as opposed to disruptive. So again, we get those questions of identity and how their identity is pe perceived by themselves, by, the, by, by their peers, and uh, importantly, by their teachers. And music can, can form a kind of portal into a, different, into a different way of looking at who you are. Now, another uh, music teacher in a, in a, in a PRU uh, talked about uh, various qualifications that are not the mainstream education qualifications. 
so so they said they leave with arts awards arts awards are are, are, are are qualifications that come from the arts council of england they leave with arts awards and a gcse equivalent for a couple of our students it has been transformative and had quite a profound impact now this project manager that i'm about to quote was speaking about young people who had become involved somewhat already in the criminal justice system and, and were young offenders and she said we would never claim to reduce offending because we can't prove it we can prove increasing people's sense of agency and self-efficacy the impact on ownership of lives and behaviors they are making music decisions and they are directing us in those musical decisions they understand they can make decisions and that their decisions are worth listening to so coming towards the end i want to look at implications of this work the music leaders interviewed tended to share quite a number of things about their approach they treated the children as equals they treated the children as co-creators as young musicians rather than students the music leaders were highly flexible in their approach responding in the moment to the needs of the group and to the needs of the environment rather than pursuing a set syllabus or plan they also focused frequently although not exclusively on the creation of new pieces of music with the young people and their approach emphasized social and personal development as much as it looked at musical proficiency or musical development by using these approaches they were able to engage and to sustain engagement with challenging young people whom others had frequently classed as unteachable so my question is if similar approaches were employed across mainstream education with this emphasis on relationship building on building mutual respect and with having the child at the center of their own musical creation could that lead to higher levels of sustained engagement higher levels of creative achievement personal growth and social development among non-excluded children as well so finally i believe that children in Prus and other children excluded from school are failing in life and this is in part because the education they receive once they are excluded does not engage their whole selves nor does it offer them pathways to the personal and social development that is necessary for them to enable them to succeed in life music if delivered appropriately with the child's own interests and creativity at the center can provide the depth and the continuity of engagement that is missing from these young people's lives and it may offer pathways for successful life outcomes now these pathways would not necessarily be into the world of professional music making but would employ the skills and understandings the children have developed through the music making encounter uh, there's my references and thank you very much for listening and please feel free to take my uh, email address and get in touch if you want to discuss or be in dialogue further about the issues that i've raised in this presentation thanks again